students and families. I am Ms. Jager, and I'm the Library Media Specialist at Mays Chapel Elementary School. Today, I wanted to share a narrative nonfiction text called Moon, written by Stacy McAnulty and illustrated by Stevie Lewis, shared with permission from Henry and Holt Company, a registered trademark of Macmillan Publishing Company. When I think of nonfiction, I know that the book is going to be sharing new information and true facts with me. I also think of the many text features an author uses to help me better understand a nonfiction book. A few examples of these text features are bold print, headings, photographs and pictures, captions, table of contents, a glossary, diagrams, maps, and graphs. This book, Moon, though, is a narrative nonfiction. So it reads more like a story with a beginning, middle, and end. I wonder if we'll see any text features in this nonfiction book. I'm also eager to learn new facts about the moon. Look up, look up, look up. It's me, moon. I'm Earth's best friends. Where Earth goes, I go. We have been together since the beginning. Almost. Let me tell you our story. Once upon a time, about four and a half billion years ago, a space rock the size of Mars crashed into baby Earth. Big old mess. Pieces of rock, chunks of Earth, and even lava were blasted into space. The, this crash trash came together to make me a satellite. Actually, I'm Earth's only natural satellite. Natural, not created by Earthlings. Satellite, I circle Earth. Now, normally a glossary is found at the end of a nonfiction text to share new vocabulary. But the author just gave me an example of what a satellite is and shared with me what natural means. She has thousands of human-made satellites too. They're mostly metal and plastic. Not exactly best friend material. Guess that makes me Earth's number one real sidekick. It takes me 27.3 days to go around Earth once. It also takes me 27.3 days to spin once. Coincidence? I think not. Means I'm dependable. My face always smiles at Earth. You never see my backside. But you probably notice I look different every night. Fun, right? Check out my phases. New moon, waxing, waning crescent, last quarter, waning gibbous, full moon, doesn't make wolves howl, waxing gibbous, first quarter, waxing crescent. Do you see a text feature here? This is a diagram. It's showing me the different phases of the moon and labels each part. It helps me to visualize the different phases of the moon. Some other planets have best friends too. I am moon, but I'm not the only moon in the solar system. Jupiter and moons, Mars and moons, Neptune and moons, Saturn and moons, Uranus and moons. I see another text feature, captions. The captions here share with me the planet and their moons. Without those captions under the pictures, I wouldn't know which planet that picture was showing me. Of all the moons, I'm fifth biggest. More captions to label the moons. Callisto, Titan, and Ganymede. I'll always be Earth's pal, but that doesn't mean we're twinsies. She's bigger, four times bigger. Moon is 6,784 miles around. Earth, 24,874 miles around. And her gravity is six times stronger. Even though this isn't a photograph of Earth and Moon, this is an illustration, something an artist drew. It helps me to picture how much larger Earth is 
then it's smooth. Gravity, the invisible force that makes an apple fall to the ground instead of flying to the sky. A cow that weighs 600 pounds on Earth would weigh only 100 pounds on me. Speaking of cows, Earth has cows and nursery rhymes and nursery rhymes starring cows. But a cow has never jumped over me. I'm too far away for even a kangaroo to make that leap. Average distance between Earth and me, 238,855 miles. You could fit 30 Earths in that distance and probably a gazillion cows. BFFs help each other out. I keep Earth from being too wobbly. This might be the most important thing I do. And you probably didn't even know about it. Earth with me, gentle spinning, my gravity at work. Earth without me, topsy-turvy. Don't worry, moon gazers, you're never without me. I don't disappear during the day. I'm always here for Earth. You just can't see me. When it's super bright out, or when it's cloudy, or when I'm on the other side of Earth. I can prove always here. I'm always here. Check out the ocean's tides. High tide happens twice a day. Low tide happens twice a day. That's gravity again, my gravity, pulling on Earth's oceans. I have the best views of Earth, and Earth has the best views of me. But some Earthlings wanted to see me up close. I'm the only other place in the universe where man has said, but, and I do mean man. I'm still waiting for my first female astronaut. I've had 12 moonwalkers and a few left footprints. And some of those footprints are still here. No wind or rain to, or snow to mess them up. Other things you will not find on me. Oxygen, mosquitoes, which is a good thing I think, plants, animals, including cows, liquid water. Things you will find on me. Rocks, really big rocks, more rocks. And presents from Earth, stuff left behind by untidy astronauts. Nail clippers, golf ball, falcon feather, hammer, and American flag. Earth and I have so much fun together. Like when we play Eclipse. Solar eclipse. I hide sun for a few minutes. We play this during the day. Lunar eclipse. Earth's shadow passes over me. We play this at night. I'm always here for Earth. I'm always here for you. Where Earth goes, I go. And where Earth goes, you go. Guess that makes us best friends too. While reading, we saw a diagram, captions, and detailed illustrations to help me picture the facts that the author shared with the reader. What new facts did you learn about the moon? I recommend visiting PebbleGo and searching the keyword moon. You could learn more about the phases of the moon and the first moon landing. I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I did.